minus one minute. T minus fifty seconds. T minus forty seconds. Minus thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Public service announcement. I need all my Titan fans to come on down. Grab you some popcorn, grab you a drink. Titans costume in the building. Yeah, not not boy, I'm in the game. Still ballin' now, never change. I be rapping my hometown for the whole city, really knew my name. Boss talk, I don't do favors. Yeah, we signing deals with the top players. We just started this lifestyle. We be having all kind of haters. I'm a mad man, they better come give me one to botch me in, but I'm too shifty. If they come at me sideways, I'ma stiff on me like Derek Henry. Now listen, we're not the same. EA Sports, boy, I'm in the game. I be rapping my city, dog. Got a tight logo hanging on the chain. Big money, big moves, new stadium on the way. Nashville, we hold it down. We the one team that you don't wanna play. They be trying to talk down on us. I just laugh at them and I walk away. I don't tolerate disrespect, might shoot the fade, pin it hard away Big money, big moves, new stadium on the way Nashville, we hold it down, we the one team that you don't wanna play We be putting in the hard work, so we coming in without kind of skill I be living in the end zone, my finger roll like Tanner Hill What's poppin'? Yes, sir. Welcome to the Titans Coliseum podcast, man. Hey, man. Today is here. Is all is what we all been waiting for. Let legal tampering. It's already begin, man. Bunch of big boos, man. Oh, uh, five star. How you feeling, man? Man, I'm feeling good. <clears throat> My bad, man. I'm feeling good, man. A lot is going on. A lot of excitement. A lot of early excitement going on in this first day. Bro, I was not expecting it, but bro, we got a handful to discuss tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. RJ was popping. Hey, man. A lot of good news happening today, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling better, better, better about this uh this free agency than what I thought going into. But they, hey, man, the tight surprise you, man. They made some moves. I'm a, I'm I'm kind of proud of, man. You know, we got some questions, but yeah, but most definitely I'm proud of, and I, I'm feeling a lot better going into this draft, most definitely. Ah, oh, yeah, man. We out here making moves, man. But uh, before we get everything on and popping, man, I want to bring somebody very special in the building, man. Uh, we got an announcement to make, too, man. Uh, we adding to the team, man. And uh, most of y'all already know him for Twitter. I mean, he's, he's a young, up-and-coming guy in the community. I mean, put out a lot of great information. I mean, if you ain't hip to him, you bullshitting. But I ain't gonna hold y'all, man. I'm just gonna bring him in here, man. Everybody, welcome Sean Sean Sports to the building. I'm Yo, good. Sean, what's popping? What's popping? Doing good, doing good. Lots of news to talk about, man. Sure, Joe, we gonna get to it, man. And hey, look, everybody, Sean, he gonna be a uh, partnering up with us. He gonna be coming out with some dope ass articles. I mean, like I said, uh, if you follow him on Twitter, I mean, you already know the type of information he's coming with. I mean, he's young, knowledgeable, and up and coming in the game. But uh, enough of me talking about you, Shar. Pop your shit, man. Tell the folks about yourself. All right. So on Twitter, uh, my ads just at Sharp Sports Titans content every day. Then on the articles wise, all right three, four articles a week about the Titans and good insight, hopefully for everyone. I got some breaking news for y'all, man. If y'all want to, if y'all want to hear it, man. Oh, oh shit, what happened? Uh, the, so the Miami Dolphins have signed uh, Titan center Aaron Brewer to a three-year deal worth of $21 million. 
Thank you, Dolphin. We ain't Thank you, no. Way to get that boy off my hand. Last year. Shit. <laughs> the dog. All, all I'm going to go. say, all I'm going to say is, as a person, I'm happy Aaron Brewer got paid, but that is, that's a questionable move. We'll just say that. Man, look, man. I they don't gonna know see what why, kind of they going to see why we didn't want him. <laughs> Maybe they saw something in that game, man, in Miami last season that they liked. I mean, like like we said, I mean, he's tougher than a two dollar steak. So hey, hey, shout out to him, man. He he got paid. I mean, they they are lo- losing a lot of people on that O line already for free agency as well. So I mean, they had to plug some holes, but if they think this is the guy. I mean, he is tough. He is good. I just I know that he wasn't what we needed. I know we're making jokes here and we're laughing and all that stuff. But man, good good job for you to go get the money, go get the bag. You deserve it. You work hard. You bust your ass out there. You you tough, but. You was not what we was needing in an offensive line as a player, and it was time to cut ties. So yeah. if it's Miami thinks that's who you are, then, then bravo to you. Congrats to you. Best of wishes to you. But we are not going to miss you. <laughs> You're gone, neither, man. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to definitely <laughs> pick off of what. I'm going to definitely pick out back with off of what Firestone said, man. He way too small, bro. That's not the center that we need yeah. moving forward, man. And he's going to go to the Dolphins, man. I hope he does well. Just not against the Titans, but, man, I'm sorry. you just not what I was looking for, man. <laughs> like, you just way too small, bro, you know. But I'm glad he got paid, though. I'm glad yeah. somebody else sees it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. yeah, man. Before we break down all the other two-tone business we got going on, man, we got 182 people in the building, man. Y'all be killing it, man. I, I hate I miss Friday's episode, but, hey, I'm in the building right now. Hey, make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. And Five Stone, you know damn well. I'm not going <laughs> to say Lions Den Beard Collection. Not, <laughs> it's better I'm every re- time. I'm, I've been practicing, man. I've been standing in the mirror practicing while I've been, you know, combing my beard and all that, man. But you you beard game strong, so you tell the people about Lions Den Beard Collection. See, by the time the regular season come, you're going to be able to be doing this promo your damn self. You ain't even going to need me. <laughs> com. if you're trying to get the luxurious products keep your beard in a tip-top shape or if you're trying to start your beard and want to start off on the right path go to lionsdenbeardcollection.com use promo code coliseum get 25 percent off your order this episode is also brought to you by sunnysmilescoffee.com of the best premium for premium freshly roasted coffee you'll find they have many different origins many different flavors and samples for you to try they even have sample bags they are giving away or having free shipping on all u.s orders currently so go to sunnysmilescoffee.com today yes sir yes sir so hey we ain't gonna hold y'all we're gonna get to this two-tone business man oh, because on. one more my bad one, one more. more one more one more make sure y'all join the titans army community on facebook as well if you are part of the titans community you if you were saying you are a titans fan then you need to be a part of the titans army community on facebook so make sure y'all go in tap in with them moderators keep all that bullshit to the low so y'all can go in there have a good time have your fun be a sports fan talk some trash but know that foolishness is going to be kept to a low so go to the titans army community on facebook Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, so let's go ahead and run it, man. Uh, This morning, before things even really just popped off or whatever, we got the news about T. Higgins demanding a trade. We already know what time it is with the Bengals. I mean, they I mean, they do this type of stuff, man. I mean, they franchise tag the dude. You know what I'm saying? It came out that they haven't negotiated a contract with him. Uh, and um. This has been going on for the last year or so. I mean, he 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 likes Cincinnati or whatnot, but he's he's uh not happy with them not negotiating a contract with them. But um uh, five stone, I'm gonna go ahead and start it off with you. Uh should should the Titans go ahead and make a move? Because shoot, it looks like the Bengals have lost a little bit of leverage. Yeah, they I mean I- I, I like T. Higgins. So, but it's, for me, it's everything's at the price. So, what are what are Bengals looking for in compensation? So, for me, a second rounder is going to be pushing it for T. Higgins in that situation of, of of compensation. Like I'm looking like third, fourth, later rounds, but I know that they're going to be looking for heavy compensation. So, but in a situation where if 
T Higgins is being there saying, Hey, you know, I'm not going to play under franchise. I want you to tag me. You all, y'all said y'all want me here. Y'all put the franchise tag on me. Y'all ain't talked to me or had any contract negotiations since I've signed the, or since y'all franchise tagged me. I don't want to be here. So he kind of putting some pressure on them too, to be like, you got to kind of get rid of this guy that don't want to play for you currently. So it's all about what they compensate. I don't want to give up too much because we don't have the draft capital, but at the same time, I know this would be a guy that would fit perfectly in Brian Callahan's first year that would help set him or help him set the culture that he's wanting to set here and build the offense the way he was, but it's also not a move I'm willing to jeopardize the Titans' future for either. All right. RJ, talk to him. Uh, I, I think I'm good on trade for T. Higgins, man. There's a lot, man. We, if you, as you see, man, ain't no wide receivers really even get picked up, man. They, everybody about to wait till after this draft. None of these wide receivers are game changer. Wide, don't, well, I'm not gonna say that about T. Higgins. T. Higgins is a good receiver, but I, I'll say like the wide receivers that's in the free agency. You know what I'm saying? They're not. None of these are game changer wide receivers. These are just young little pickups. Everybody's gonna wait till after the draft because this is probably the most stacked wide receiver draft that we've seen in a very, very long time. And see what we get out of there, and then they're gonna go to free agency and get some of these players, man. And I. I definitely, you know, I said, like I said, I agree with Cortland Griffin, man, like right down here, man. He said the Titans won day one, and I agree. I think we won day one, man. You know, we'll get to the other picks later. But as if for T. Higgins, no, nah, I'm good, man. We can wait. We can wait, man. Now be patient, y'all. We're going to get the receivers we want. Yes, sir. Sean, what's happening? I agree with RJ. Uh, I know T. Higgins is a popular name, but if you can get that – receiver at seven you get the rookie contract as well so you don't have to pay the receiver if they trade for t higgins they have to give him a big contract so if they just go draft the receiver at seven if that's what they're going to do you got that rookie contract and you have an immediate impact player if they draft the receiver at 38 that's another rookie contract for even cheaper and we know how deep this receiver class is a guy like troy franklin from uh oregon could be there ad mitchell from texas could be there worthy from texas could be there so i think it's an exciting um idea to trade for t higgins i'm good though i'd pass on it yeah no because I, I agree with y'all but that's what i said if the price is right if, if they gonna let him go and we just got to give away you know like you know a couple thirds three four something i'll be willing for that but you also brought up a good point there like the contract on that back end is still going to be something you have to consider too the only way i'll take t higgins off of a trade we're going to uh pick swap man i'll really pick swap that first round give him a 2025 20, third round pick man I, I don't want i just not i'm not feeling giving up that 38 pick for t higgins he's a good player but he's not he's not what everybody hyping him up to be like he's not justin jefferson or jamar chase like come on now like you know he's a good player but we haven't seen him as a number one wide receiver yet and what he is as number one wide receiver yeah. until that, man. That's why I said it was stupid that the Bengals even tagged him because they, I don't think anybody's going to trade a first or second round pick for him that's stupid. Like, we'll yeah, see, though. Yeah, you got to be, we'll see, you gotta be cautious with paying Robin, man, because it, it doesn't always work out. I mean, uh, you got some situations to where, you know, the Robin guy, he got paid and he came in and he, and he done his thing, but – you know, T. Higgins, he's been dealing with, you know, some injuries here and there. And um, even though he's had, you know, some good seasons, he's coming off of a down season as well. And for the Titans and what they got going on, I just don't feel comfortable with them giving up even a second round pick because the Titans don't even got a third round pick to give. I wouldn't be comfortable with giving up a second round pick. Damn sure wouldn't be comfortable giving up the seventh overall pick when there's, you know, so many good options out there for a younger, much cheaper wide receiver. Faster wide receivers is that because that's been one of our things. The Titans are trying to get younger and faster. And that's something I'm going to be talking about here in a few because. Our fellow fans, good God. But uh <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool on T Higgins. But uh like let's I said, get I, on. Go ahead. I agree with y'all, but like I think the things that make Bengals in such a bad situation where other wide receivers or other people that's been in the situation had more leverages is that they was ready to kind of mutually go with that, or they was willing to keep that player. Um, T Higgins also has a lot of injury issues too. That's going to come to play. And when it comes into trade talk, the fact that I have to sign him to a contract and deal with that, that's going to come into trade talk. So it's not like you're signing me a guy that's been healthy, top five wide receiver in the league and on a contract. So you're, you're not really in a good negotiation situation as the Bengals either, especially if the guy says, I want out of here, you're kind of sit there stuck with trying to 
deal with the best offer at the table. So you can kind of take advantage of it. But like I said, you can't give up too much if that situation, because even if you go get T Higgins, I still believe you got to draft the wide receiver. He's not the guy to solve the problems. He would just be a good piece to have for Brian Callahan in first year. Right, right, right. Let's go ahead and move along because um, like I said, the Titans been making moves today. And the first move that was made today, they went and got a running back. A good running back, I'll say. Not hmm. all our fellow fans agree. Not all our fellow fans understand. But, hey, it is what it is. The Titans, they agreed to a three-year deal with a former Cowboys running back, uh, Tony Pollard, man. Uh, as y'all know, Tony Pollard, he's a Tennessee guy, you know, uh, grew up in Memphis. Um, I drafted by the Cowboys, had a good career with the Cowboys, took over as uh, the feature running back for them last season. The season didn't go, you know, as planned. He was coming back off of an ankle injury, I believe. But like I said, man, um, I believe it was a good sign, and I'll talk some more about it. But I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Shore and uh, get his thoughts about Tony Pollard coming to the Titans. I like it. Um, I think the contract, you have to see the full language. It was $8 million per year. I think it's a slight overpay, not a big one. I think it was a slight, but I like the signing. Uh, him and Spears uh, in the backfield together, I think that's going to be a great combination uh, in the run and pass game. So it's going to be electric. It'll be a new style of Titans offense where it's not like a power back and someone who's really good out of the backfield like we've seen like the past couple of years with Spears and Henry, Henry and DeMarco Murray. So It'll be different to have two running backs who, you know, have the speed, you know, can catch the football, but I'm excited for it. So I think it's a good signing. I think it's getting way more like hate than it really should. Exactly. RJ, talk to him. I really like the pick, man. Uh, like I said, man, it, it's time. Like I know people's like, well, you guys are replacing Derrick Henry with Tony Pollard, man. He, I, I get it. Tony Pollard's not a better back than Derrick Henry. I'm not going to even argue that. But guess what? The Tennessee Titans are going to be a run first football team no more. We're not going to win yeah. games because our running back ran for 100 yards. That's not what we're trying to be anymore. We're trying to win games because we threw for 300 on you and three TDs. And guess who helps that? Tony Pollard. <laughs> not Derrick Henry is not going to get you to 300 yards every single game because you're going to be handing him the ball. You know what I'm saying? You look at Tony Pollard, he brings a whole different element in the, into the pass game. I can tell Tony Pollard to go into the side and run a slant. I can tell Tony Pollard to go to the side and run a, a, a wheel route, a go route. You know what I'm saying? Give me give me a, a, a halfback wheel for once. When the last time we seen a halfback wheel? You know what I'm saying? When the last time we seen a, a, a Texas route? You get what I'm saying? When the last time I seen that? You know, the Derrick Henry, don't get me wrong, he's an elite running back. Well, he, he was for us. He was an elite running back. But, like, in the past game, man, he didn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, he only going to catch the ball under uh, under five yards, man. I'm trying to get the ball down the field. And Tajay Spears and, and uh, Tony Pollard both bring that. And he, guess what? When Tony Pollard comes off the field or when Tajay Spears comes off the field, he just going to bring another running back in to do the same thing. So we're never going to tip our hand at what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? It makes us less predictable. Right. All right. I'm a little bit on the other side of the spectrum. Okay. Now I don't hate this not at all. And it, and I am excited about this, but my thing is if Deandre Swift has the same damn contract, why would we not make a bigger push for that? For me, Deandre Swift is a lot better of a back for us. The same type of contract, make that push as well. For me, Pollard had a good season two years ago. Then this season came up and he depleted a little bit, had the same amount of yardage, but he had like what 70 more carries and he had the same amount of total of that market. So I'm worried that, okay, you had one good year and I'm a big fan of believer that if you have a good year, one year, people have tape. And when people have tape and can study you, then they can start figuring you out. So it's what you can do after that one year, if whether or not you're good, I'm just concerned that people figured out Pollard and they have him on tape and they've start to figure it out how to get him and how to figure them out and how to box them in. I'm excited about what he can do because he can go catch. He can bring another dynamic. We're not so predictable and all those things. So I am excited about that. But when I heard this and then I saw the DeAndre Swift contract, I'm like, did we make a push for that? Do they really feel like Pollard is a bigger fit? Because there's still some question marks for Tony Pollard for me. Once Zeke left and the load was his, it became hard. Now, we're not going to expect that from him. We're going to be a committee here. But he has some little tic-tac injuries that happen. 
and we're going to need another running back back here if we're going to be a committee. We can't just go into this this year with Pollard and just Tajay Spears. We're going to need another one, too, if we're going to do this running back by committee uh, running stuff. And I say this to uh, Firestone. I, I might have to disagree with you on this one, man, but I agree with what Cortland said right here. Like, I don't think that Swift brings nearly enough production in the past game that Tony Pollard does. Now, I mean, I would say this though Tony, pa I mean, uh, De DeAndre Swift is a hell of a runner, but you said that two years ago that Tony Pollard had a good season and, and you didn't have nothing, you know what I'm saying? Nothing after that. What the hell was DeAndre Swift before he got to the Eagles? <laughs> what was he? He was trying. He was uh, saying that he was a bust. You know what I'm saying? You didn't hear about DeAndre Swift until he got to the Eagles. So to say that he, you know, I should pay him that much money off for one season when when Tony Pollard's had multiple seasons of being good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I feel like you know. I feel like Tyus made a, made a good move. And I, I'm not. I don't necessarily disagree with it, but I was just questioning it because for me, when I look at it, when I look at the past couple seasons, it looks like Swift is learning stuff. OK, and mm -hmm. Swift is only 25, by the way. So that's why he ain't yeah. been so as Pollard as he is still young. So he looks like he's catching things on and he looks more explosive where last year it looked like Tony Pollard took a step back. And that's what I'm concerned about. One looks like they're increasing and one looks like they're depleting. I'll say this, though. I don't think that I, I, I think Dallas just didn't have any other running backs outside of Tony Pollard to make him work. I think they had they gave him over 250 carries. And I just feel like that's way too much for Tony Pollard. I mean, granted, he did. He was in for four yards a carry. But I just don't think he's not a volume carry running back, man. He's more so, a, you know, what I'm saying like you, you can't like the Cowboys trying to be a run first team. And you just can't do that with, with Tony Pollard, man. He's more so a. A scat back, he's gonna be, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna come off of another running back and you know what I'm saying bust a big run. I just don't think that that's like trying to run Devin A chain 30 times every game, like it's not gonna work. You know what I'm saying? You got multiple backs for him, you know. Yeah. I just feel like Pollard is a better number two back. So in, in yeah. my eyes now, Tajay has to be one, and we paid this money for a two back. Where what is rolling? I, I, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. I think he meant I wouldn't. <laughs> It, 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 I just think that that it's. I, <laughs> so, <laughs> what is the world? Man, that is the But it, it, I don't know. It, <laughs> I am excited Sorry, about it. on that play <laughs> ball. He's celebrating. He playing Madden, bro. That's what he doing, man. <laughs> All right, what was you saying? Fire so my man. I lost track of some of it, but no, I am excited about Tony Pollard being in here. I am looking forward to it, but I just feel like Tony Pollard is a number two back for us because he would he did have his best production when he was backing up the seat, come in to be the different change of flow guy. So for me, Tajay Spears has to be the feature guy now, and then Pollard has to be the back, and then you just paid. Eight million a year for a backup running back, so I, I I'm with I'm, I'm I'm with Charm here a little bit. Like we kind of overpaid a little bit because Tajay has to be the feature back. I don't think Tony Pollard does good carrying the load and being the feature back. And I'll say this though, I I trust Rand Carthon when it comes to running backs because we this same thing that we're doing right now with Tony Pollard is the same thing we did with Tajay Spears. Why don't we get a running back? You know, they got no ACLs. Oh, why don't we get a running back? Why? You know what I'm saying? We was all in here. Like, why? And now we're doing it with Tony Pollard. And I feel like if we if we know I feel like Brian Callahan with his mind, with that speed and that agility. And in the in the ways that uh that Tony Pollard could be used, you know what I'm saying? It, if you if you gave him Brian Callahan that man, I feel like he gonna get the best out of dude. He gonna get that he gonna get that eight million out of him, man, or five to eight million out of him, man. And you know we'll see though. It all comes down to what his production is on the tights. You, you got to remember uh, Callahan's track record too with running backs. I know Mixon Mixon was good for a good few years, but then. If you remember when uh, Mixon got hurt a couple years ago, Samaji Piran, he had a very good stint with them uh, as a backup. And then they also had, I forgot his name. He came in for Mixon again this year. Oh, no, this year? Okay. This year yeah. it was, let me look it up real quick. I think it was Evan something, Bengals, running backs. Uh, Travion Williams, uh, a couple years ago, he played well in, with uh, Callahan as well when Mixon was out. So he, he has had success with backup running backs. So I think he's going to know how to use Pollard well, and I trust Rand on this. I, tr I trust Callahan on this. I like this signing. Yes, it was a bit of an overpay for a backup running back, but in free agency, let's be honest, it's the Titans. Sometimes you're going to have to overpay when you're a team like this. So I like the signing, honestly. Yeah, yeah true. 
as long as he's not going to be a traditional backup, he's going to be more like a one B then yeah, this, yeah. this is going to be fine. And I, and I do that. I think that's what it was. And I'm like, like I said, I'm not truly upset about it. I was like, Oh, we got 24. I was just like, man. And I didn't want to go big out and pay Saquon or Josh Jacobs. Neither. I wanted a good quality back at a good quality price. So I don't necessarily hate it, but Swift is kind of the guy I was eyeing all free agency. Mm. Which, right, which so hey, look, I, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So look, I get that people, you know, are, you know, in disagreement about the pay. I mean, yeah, it is a bit of overpay, but at the same time, it's the Titans, it's free agency. I mean, it's what happens. I mean, and RJ is right. I myself trust Rand when it comes to running backs because just like he said, everybody was sitting up over here complaining about Tajay Spears when we drafted him. But then when we got into the season, Oh, I think Taj A. Spears can be our number one running back. He'll let Derrick Henry go. And I'm like, hold up, y'all. Yeah, he's doing some good things. But just because he's coming in in relief of Derrick Henry doing some good things doesn't mean that he can be a feature running back. Just like Tony Pollard. Everybody said, oh, Tony Pollard got this. They let Zeke go. He can talk the ball 30 times a day. That is going to be <laughs> much better because of No, that is not the case at all. Yeah. I mean, the Titans, they are getting away from the old bell cow man mentality. And our fellow fans have to get away from that old bell cow mentality too. The Titans are trying to evolve. The Titans are trying to run a modern-day offense. These modern-day offenses don't have those bell cow tote the ball 30 times a game backs anymore. No, you see a committee of them. Now, which dude is going to get the most carries? I don't know. It seems like they're going to roll with the hottest hand. And yeah. I don't think the Titans are done with running backs. So if you sitting up here complaining about Oh, Taze Spears and Tony Pollard are the same running backs. I mean, just understand, free agency hasn't officially begun. The third day. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a whole nother wave that's coming. And also, too, we can get a power back in the draft. I mean, y'all worried about dumb shit like who's going to run the ball on third and two. Hey, <laughs> Jeffrey Simmons can run the ball on third and two. How about that? But, I mean, as far as Tony Pollard, I like the signing. I mean, at first, I was like, Tony Pollard, hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to think about it for a second. But then once I thought about it, it hit me. The Titans are trying to be a modern-day offense. I mean, they trying to be less predictable. Y'all sit up here and cry all season. Last year, hell, y'all been crying about the shit for the last four or five years about being predictable. All the times, every time their hair is on the field, we're running the ball, teams do it. But then the second we try to change some things up, here y'all go, they're the same running back. It makes total sense for them to be the same running back because the offense doesn't have to change. It's less predictable. Whatever they can do with Ty J. Spears, they can do it with Tony Pollard. So, hey, guys, just understand that the Titans are trying to evolve. We all love Derrick Henry. But, hey, come to this modern-day offense with us. Embrace it, y'all. Okay, so I think this is a perfect time to do this. But, I mean, we're all, we're all in agreement of, you know, we, we trust Rand, right? We all we all trust Rand? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going we're gonna to shame this plug real quick. Look, we got new shirts out <laughs> <laughs> Let Rand cook, all right? Y'all stop being so hard. Stop doubting this man, all right? Go march out now. Let Rand cook 2024. All right. Just put the shameless plug out the way. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But uh, I ain't going to babble on too much about uh, Tony Pollard. Like I said, man, I like it. I mean, the Titans, they are trying to be less predictable, and they aren't done with running backs, man. But um, we're going to keep this thing rocking and rolling because of uh, – Maybe our fellow fans do got a little bit of sense because, you know, shortly after it was announced that the Titans would be signing Tony Pollard, they, uh, they're, they, uh, I'm tongue twisted, but 
you know, news came out that they are going to be bringing in a former Denver center of Brian Cushenberry. I think that's his first name or whatnot. I hope I didn't fuck that up, but uh, they're going to be bringing in Cushenberry from the Broncos, man. And he's one of the best pass blocking centers out there. I mean, one of the best centers out there, period. I mean, he's a guy that uh, a lot of people been howled throughout this whole thing. And when I saw that, man, I mean, I'll, I got hype. I'm not going to lie. I mean, shoot, man, coming uh, coming from uh, tougher than a $2 steak at 250 pounds to, you know, a legitimate guard, a legitimate anchor, a legitimate guy that's going to hold his own no matter what, man. I mean, I was ecstatic about that, man. But, uh, Five Stone, your thoughts about Cushionberry? Yeah, for, uh, first name's Lloyd, by the way, just to – Lloyd, know, Lloyd, okay. Yeah. Cool, uh, cool. I knew I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited about it because it's a piece that we it kind of feels like a staple. Like we've been kind of like, okay, we got we got Skaronsky, but we kind of needed a veteran presence. And veteran presence didn't mean somebody in the 30s. It just means somebody who's been around this league a few years and know know what to do, how to read things, scheme, how to take care of a body, how to practice, how to prepare, all these different things. And I really feel like we finally got that with, with Cushenberry. I mean, he played really good out there. Um, and, and Denver, so uh, the, well, he was like a fourth round pick too, I believe is what he was back in the day when he when he actually came in four years ago. So I really think this is a good pick. I'm excited to see what what Bill and Brian use him as and uh, how he plays on this offensive line for us. But uh, I, I need I need to see more. I, I like this, but we still need some more holes on this offensive line. So it doesn't stop here. But this is a damn good starting point in my opinion. Hey, RJ, holla at Oh man, I really really like this pick, man. Especially, I've never been this happy to get a center in my life. I don't think <laughs> after watching Brewer getting ran over every week, man, in in, in the past game, man. I'm sorry, bro. I'm, I mean, like I said, hey, I like I like Lloyd Cushenberry, man. I'm, I, I've been looking at, I've been looking at tape, I've been looking at stats. Like, man, he's. I'm so happy we picked this guy up, man. I'm glad we, he's he's gonna be worth every penny, man. And we reset the center market with them. Y'all didn't know that we reset the center market with how much we paid Lloyd Cushenberry, a lot of money. But hey, he's gonna be a good player for us, and we'll be able to protect Will Levis a lot better than what we have been protecting them with him there. So we'll see. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. Yo, Sean, <laughs> you see, going it. What the I think. <laughs> I think this is. The, I think this was the best signing of the day. It was <laughs> my bad, bro. That was a funny game. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah so bad. My bad, my bad. Hey, you could. Bad. bad, everybody in the chat, man. They they be turning us up, man. They be coming through saying all kinds of crazy shit, man. They they be catching us all guard, man. But go ahead and holler at them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah, Cushion Bear. I think that was the best signing of the day for the Titans. Um, one sack allowed, thirteen pressures allowed last year. It's a Brewer who allowed six sacks, and about I think thirty-five pressures. So it's a major upgrade. Uh, he's also almost as good, or even a better run blocker than Brewer was. So this is an upgrade in every single uh aspect of the game for the Titans, and it's just a start, man. They need tackles. They need another guard. Uh. If Brun if they don't feel comfortable with Brunskill at right guard, but this is a really good signing by Rank Carthon. Yeah, man. As y'all can see in the comments, man, y'all make sure y'all head over to Titan Coliseum uh website, man, and go get go get one of them shirts, man. And stop questioning us about the damn shirt, man. Just support <laughs> the motherfucker. God dang, y'all shit. <laughs> we we just up over here trying to make a little buck or whatever, man, to keep this thing. Rocking and rolling, man. I mean, we ain't trying to force the shit down your throat. All we telling you to do is support us and let Rand do his damn job. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can find our kick the grass and can get past it. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, yeah. Says, oh, so number seven, we draft and a kicker. That, that's what I, that's what we did in this hit. Yeah, and to their point too, like Brewer, Brewer got paid what 21 million at the Dolphins, you know what I'm saying? So we're, we're getting a good quality player at a position that we need. One player's leaving. They got a contract. They're getting paid highly again. It's like watching Dennis Daly go to Arizona last year and like 20 something million for Dennis Daly with the thank y'all. Appreciate it. Go ahead, take them. So 
I, I'm, I'm really excited, but man, we still got a lot of holes on this offensive line, but there's still some good guys out here in uh, free agency. But like y'all said, this is day one and day one. I'm excited. I like what we're doing. I like the talks that we've been in. So I'm excited to see how this thing's going. So this is all talks right now. Signing don't happen till Wednesday at 4 p.m. No, oh, yeah, man. You got to keep that in mind, man. I mean, it's 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 a lot of good players that's still out there, you know, uh, trying to figure out their situation. That's why I say, man, uh, to the fellow fans out there, man, don't lose your mind right now. I mean, yeah. it, everybody's trying to sign free agents or whatnot. And just because the Titans don't sign the guy that you in love with doesn't mean that they aren't trying to build the team, man. And these guys are free agents too. They can sign with whoever. I mean, shoot, what you want Rand to do? Go out there and, you know, tie them up and, you know, force them to sign with the Titans. No, nah, it don't work like that, man. We don't want the man to get a dead gum kidnapping charge. We want the man to build the football team, man. So that's why I say, man, let Rand cook, man. Y'all make sure y'all go buy that shirt, too. I had to plug it one more time, man, because <laughs> I thought it was pretty smooth. Plug it. But um, so moving I got, along, go ahead. I got a question for y'all and, and for chat, too, and it kind of will help, you know, move along, too. But who is the most surprising signing? or today or agreeing to terms that you saw around the NFL today? Who, who, when you saw it come across the screen or across your notification, just shocked you is like, Oh damn, that happened. Hmm. I'm going to say most surprising to me, most surprising to me. Is, I would have to say, say Quan Barkley to the Eagles, man, for the simple fact that, you know, I, I thought the Eagles were going to be looking to, um, you know, uh, cut, cut some of the cost or whatnot. But when I seen Saquon Barkley and, you know, that deal he uh, made with the Eagles, I was like, good God alive. I mean, shoot, they, they trying to run it back for real, for real. And, you know, uh, Saquon, I mean, shoot, shout out to him, man. I mean, he got paid. I mean, I think he should have got paid last season, but you know how, you know how these teams do. I mean, they're going to try to hold your hostage as long as they can. But, um, I'll say this, man. If this don't work for the Eagles, good God alive, it, it's gonna they, be. They bad, still ain't fixed for corners. Damn, they still, they still, they still, <laughs> they still screwed up in the secondary, dude. I mean, I, yeah. I get it, but then again, I yeah. don't get it. Another surprise that moved to me, man. Uh, I didn't see this coming either, man. Maybe I was slow to the situation, but. I did not see Aaron Jones getting cut today, man. Yeah. Oh man, you ain't see man. that at all. Yeah. I didn't I did see it. See so what well, yeah, I say mine. I say mine. Uh Danico Asha going to the Texas, bro. Like, golly, bro. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, I, heard, I was the first one that popped in my head. I was like, man, don't damn I said, don't damn Texas, uh, bro. Like, yeah. Like, Cause they got mine was, uh, uh, captains us, bro. So I've been watching, I've been keeping my eye on them. Yeah. I have two as well. Uh, Josh Jacobs of the Packers. Uh, yeah. He he's coming. He had three point five yards per carry last year and under a thousand yards. He gets twelve million dollars a year uh, to the Packers, coming off like his, the worst year of his career, which that was shocking to me. And also Aziz Alshire to the oh, Texans yeah. for over eleven million dollars a year for a guy who cannot cover anything. So <laughs> those are those are the two. He can't cover a middle school <laughs> tight end. It's that bad. So I think uh, that that was shocking to me. Uh, but Danico Autry is also shocking. Uh, at first, it was reported it was like two years, ten million. Then it switched up to two years, twenty million. But I really thought that if, if they were going to bring him back, then they were going to try to win this year. I still think they can win football games this year, but I don't know. I think it's it's a cur it's curious that they let him go. Man, for me, I mean, obviously, all those y'all listed was definitely shockers for me. So I got to go with something else here. But another name that came out and shocked me today was Kirk Cousins to Atlanta Falcons. Who, who's Kirk Cousins' agent, bro? Last contract he got was what, how many million fully guaranteed? <laughs> now this dude gets a $100 million contract, $50 million guaranteed, ain't done shit in the playoffs. Who is this man's agent? He deserves Agent of the Year award. He keeps constantly getting this man good-ass contract. I could not believe they paid that much for that man and gave him so much guaranteed again. 
Yeah, and he, he has good numbers, though, man. I've been talking with Falcon fans. I told them all the way up until today. I said, y'all, I said, y'all best bet is just go get Kirk Cousins. Go get Keith a good quarterback. But I mean, you might have to pay a lot for him. But Kirk Cousins, I mean, he gonna do, he gonna get them, he gonna throw the ball to Kyle Pitts and Drake London and, and B. John Robinson like y'all want them to. I'm telling you. <laughs> but he old, though. They paid, they gave him a four year deal. Like, I'm oh, like, bro, he's gonna be 40 by the time he leaves. Coming off a torn ACL as well. That's yes. crazy. 50 million guaranteed. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> crazy. They gave him a 40 bag, bro. Oh, it's mm. unreal. It's, it's just, but I will it's, say this about Atlanta, though. I, I will say this about them, man. Um, they need a respectable passer to utilize uh, some of those weapons that they got up over there, man. And um, you can say what you want about Kirk Cousins, but uh, Kirk Cousins going to get that ball to the weapons, man. I mean, uh, Justin Jefferson, I mean, as great as he is, he wouldn't be that guy if – you know, uh, he didn't have anybody solid getting him the football. Um, same thing with T.J. Hawkinson. Uh, T.J. Hawkinson got traded to uh, the Vikings, and uh, he came over there and he did his thing, and that was with Kirk Cousins. And Atlanta has, you know, a similar situation going on up over there. They don't have Justin Jefferson. I mean, they got Drake London, which Drake London is decent to me. They got Kyle Pitts up over there. Who needs to be utilized? Because I mean, he got too damn too much damn talent to be getting wasted. And they also got Bijan Robinson, who they drafted in what the first round? Didn't they draft him in like the top ten or whatever? Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, um, he's got to get the ball coming out the backfield too, man. I mean, sure he can run the ball or whatever, but. You know, they didn't draft him that high just for him to sit up and run the football. No, nah, they're trying to utilize him in the pass game. So I think um, it, it can open up some things for the Falcons. And also, too, they're in a division to where there aren't, you know, any, you know, uh, top-tier quarterbacks or whatnot. I mean, you got, uh, you got Derek Carr over in uh, New Orleans, and uh, you got Baker Mayfield – who uh, got re-signed with the Bucks, and you got uh, Bryce Young with with the Panthers. So, I mean, he's easily the best quarterback in their division. So, it's opening up some things for Atlanta. Bro, these <clears throat> these quarterbacks and, and this situation now, too, especially with New England tra trading Mac Jones now, it's starting to kind of shape the draft a little bit that you know a lot of these teams – are going to go QB in these in the top three, definitely going QB now. And even Giants might even go QB at six. So we're looking at two picks that's before us that's potentially not being QB. So we're going to be sitting at seven, potentially looking really damn good with Chargers taking an offensive lineman, Cardinals being the only people taking like a wide receiver or skill position. And we're going to be sitting there with offensive line options, wide receiver options. And it's like you can't mess it up no matter what you're going to do. Malik Neighbors might be there. You know, uh, Fushanu might be there for us. So I really think Giants might go QB, too, with how everything is looking and how how their, their rosters are changing. But we could be really sitting pretty at number seven and not thinking that a lot of players are going to be gone before we thought they were, how this free agency is starting to turn out. Man, I also, ain't a lot, man. I'm having a kind of change of heart right now because I, you know, me, I've been big Joe out this whole time, man. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I'm starting to like Olu Fashanu a little Stop. bit more, man. Just, mm. just for this. No, I ain't going to wide receiver, man. We ain't getting no receiver, bro. Y'all might as well just go ahead and get that out there. We trying to protect <laughs> legs, man. Olu Fashanu, man, he got better pass. See, I see we trying to pass the ball now. So we going to talk about straight pass blocking. Then I'm going to go Olu Fashanu, man. That's, I'm making a change of heart. Also, trade back if they decide to trade back, which I don't know if they will. Uh, Minnesota no longer has Kirk Cousins. They don't have really any quarterbacks on their roster. We could get a good package from Minnesota to move back a couple spots. Maybe Ulu yeah. Fashanu is still there. Maybe the, the Joe Watson going to be there, obviously. Uh, if they do end up going receiver at the first round, I wouldn't. I'd go get the offensive lineman. But trade back is also becoming an option with Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta. So the Titans are sitting pretty right now. Uh, yeah. at seven and whatever they want to do 
Yeah, because only Minnesota's only at eleven, so it's jumping from seven to eleven. That's not a far drop, neither. You just barely get outside the top ten. So yeah, bro, I'm with that too. Like trade back is a really feasible option right now with how some of these position teams are going and how they're needing players. If you still think you can get your guy at eleven, if it's offensive lineman, I, I think you can go and still grab Fushano at eleven. Nah, yeah, I'm going to trade back all the way, man, because uh, like I said before, not having that third-round pick is uh, is messing with me a little bit, man, because I feel like the third round is, you know, a sweet spot in the draft. I mean, that's where you start – Oh God! Here we go. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, but I just say yes. Move up to four. I am agreeing with you, Kyle. Yes, thank you. Somebody's on the <laughs> okay, okay, We just we ain't got no draft capital, dog. No, we don't have no capital. Uh, <laughs> we already ain't got no third round pick, bro. You want to trade up? But you know we ain't gonna take a lot to trade up. Hey, hey, <laughs> shit! I can't knock the guy. I want Justin Jefferson bad in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, you just go up to Cardinals like, hey, look, here, here's our seventh. Here's Traylon Burks. Here's a third for next year. Let's let's start talking. This is a, this is a good ground to start on. Come on, that, that was Rabel's mess up. Traylon Burks up. Y'all can tro- coach Traylon Burks up. Come on, y'all can y'all can definitely. Y'all had D Hop, Larry Fitzgerald. Y'all can do this stuff, man. I would picture that all day long trying to get forward and get Marvin Harrison. Man, look, man. <laughs> I can't I can't knock it at all, man. But uh man, uh let's go ahead and get to you know some more two-tone business or whatnot. I mean, shoot, they ain't two-tone business anymore, but I mean, hell, let's get to it, man. Um two of our former Titans, man, they are not with the Tennessee Titans anymore. They went to the enemy, they went to the Houston, Texas, the Nico Autry. And Aziz Al Shair, man. And um Autry, I mean, I I don't know what to feel about Autry outside of the fact that, you know, the Titans are trying to get younger and faster. You're not getting younger re-signing Denico Autry. It was brought up to me that, you know, uh get younger and faster, don't give you 10.5 sacks. And my thing about that is 10.5 sacks didn't get us to the playoffs last year. So what is you talking about, dude? I mean, shoot, I appreciate the hell out of these players that come in and contribute, but at the same time, I've got to be real about the situation. Danico Autry is getting older. He ain't getting no younger. And those 10.5 sacks, I appreciate the hell out of it. But you're only going to see those numbers drop as the years go on. And Red understands that. I mean, he got a what? Two-year, $20 million deal, uh, yeah. $10 million guaranteed. That's essentially a one-year deal right there. So bringing him back $10 million at what? 33 years old or however old he is, man, and with – we're old still on this team. I mean, shit, we ain't even got the offensive line fully addressed yet. We ain't signed out one receiver. So I'm really not tripping off of Denico Autry, you know, not re-signing with the Titans. I'm tripping off him going to the Texans because fuck the Texans. I don't want to see them motherfuckers come up or whatnot. And, you know, Denico, he may give them some good production, but – they signed him to the contract that they signed him uh, for for a reason because they understand, too, that he's not getting any younger. Now, the thing about uh, Aziz or whatnot, not tripping about Aziz because he's going back to his former coach. He's going back to uh, D'Amico Ryan. I mean, that that's understandable. I mean, once he made the little uh, – Post, uh, you know, took the little picture with the 49ers uh, or whatnot. I mean, the writing was on the wall right there. I mean, he wasn't coming back to the Titans. People say he was going back to the 49ers, but I took it as if he's not coming back to the Titans regardless. But, I mean, the Titans, they got to feel this hole in linebacker now, and which, you know, he was a good he was a good run stopper. I'm not going to take that away from him. He was a damn good run stopper. Um, 
Didn't he set the franchise record for tackles or some shit? Yeah, like he had that? 143 uh, tackles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I made damn good run stop or whatnot. Not so good in coverage like Sharm said a while ago, man. And um, I, I, I forget, you know, uh, what y'all said about whatever. I know Sharm said he couldn't cover a high school tight end. Uh, Corey also said uh, he couldn't cover somebody. I think he said a wet paper bag or some shit like that. But, yeah. I mean, the guy can't cover, man. And, you know, on the Titans end, if they get this shit together on defense, you're going to see Aziz getting cooked like a motherfucker up out there, and you're not going to be sitting up here crying about not having Aziz. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, toss it over to you, RJ. Uh, I'm going to be real, man. I'm going to keep it 100, man. Yeah, they took some players from us. Yeah, they probably going to laugh and joke at us. But I'm going to be 100% real with y'all. The Texans aren't having a good – they're not having a good free agency right now. They didn't get Saquon. They didn't get uh what was the other guy they were that they wanted really bad, man. They didn't get Wilkins. They didn't get Wilkins. You know what I'm saying? They haven't got anybody. They got Ronald. Did they, what they, did they get Ronald Darby? No, they got uh, Jeff Okuda, who's trash. <laughs> they got um Did they get him? Yeah, they got Jeff Okuda. Oh, they got, okay. you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at they look at their signers. I'm like, these ain't these these signers aren't making you better. <laughs> like, what you're gonna be the same team you was last year. You didn't sign anybody that's a game changer. You didn't sign nobody. I mean, what? What? Did, who did you sign that's any that's worth a damn? In my opinion, and like, it, like, and then you overpaid. Don't get me wrong. I think Denico Audrey is a good player, and I, I appreciate him while he was here. But you overpaid for him. Let's be hundred percent real. You getting him for two ten million dollars for two years, and he old, and he might get hurt. You never know. You know, when these people start getting over thirty plus, they start getting hurt, man. And granted, luckily he stayed healthy with us, but you don't know if that's gonna happen. You're not going to keep getting these good years out of De- Denico Autry like this, especially when you don't have another guy in the middle like that, you know? And yeah. I, I look at it like this. Uh, you look at, at Aziz. They paid Aziz like he was goddamn Ray Lewis. It's <laughs> like, bro, 11 million a year? Like, <laughs> come on, bro. He's a good linebacker. But, he, yeah, they didn't get Mike Evans either. I forgot about that. They didn't get Mike Evans. They're probably not going to get Derrick Henry. You know what I'm saying? They're not. They're not enjoying this offseason, man. They. If you go to their podcast right now, the Texans fan battle or wherever fan battle, wherever Texans, <laughs> Texans wire, <laughs> bullhorn, <laughs> bullhorn.com. I promise you, you go. They gonna be on there. Yeah, we didn't get this guy. We didn't get this guy. Oh, blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, they lost Singletary. I just seen that they lost Singletary, bro. Like they losing so many, bro. They 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 are not feeling good, bro. I'm telling you, they are not happy at their GM. <laughs> bro, let me tell you, they're pretty upset about this. Look, this is this is this is some of the signings they had. All right, so Dalton Schultz resigns three years, thirty six million, twenty three and a half. Good signing for them. All yeah. right, Danico Autry, twenty million, ten and a half guaranteed. Al Shire, $34 million deal, three years. Mike Ford, two years, 4.5. Then they they got uh, Lonnie Johnson, one-year contract. Jeff Okuda, uh, one-year, $4 million right. contract. And then Fairbarn right. as a kicker, three-year contract, $16 million. Yeah, they ain't scaring me. I mean, y'all yeah. got all this, CJ. <laughs> did they get any better, shit, all you want to. They did I not mean, get better. Shit. They got worse. I'm not worried they about Blake the damn Texans. They, 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 they lost yeah. Blake Cashman, who was one of the better linebackers last year. They replaced him with Aziz, who, shout out to Aziz, he's not better than Blake Cashman. So Man. they lost a, a Green Yard, too. You didn't bring that up. Jonathan yes. Grenard. They yes. lost him, too. And they yep. replaced him. Shout out to Zadinko Autry. He did a lot here. One of the best free agency signings in franchise history. But him at 35 years old replacing Grenard, that's that's a downgrade. That's a downgrade. Yeah. So they downgrade. They brought in people like Danico Autry's, the Aziz Alshayers, but they're downgrading. They're not going to get Derrick Henry probably. It's going to be Baltimore or Dallas. They're going to downgrade their running back probably. Like They downgraded at a lot of positions today. Yeah, they still got, um, as Texas fans say, they still got God. I mean, he's still, you know, turning water in the Gatorade. He's still 
feeding the whole team with five loaves of bread and two fish or whatever. Uh, I mean, I'm saying, and, and I called <laughs> it. I called what the Texans are going to do. They got lucky with C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud's a good quarterback, but they're going to put way too much on him to try to win a Super Bowl, man, and they're never going to win one because they're putting way too much on him to win. Like, you know what I'm saying? They, they want him to do everything. <laughs> They can't give them no receivers. They all they got is a left tackle. That's really can't. like who really scared? Are you really scared of they receivers? Hey, he bro? falls storm like hell. <laughs> <laughs> like Tank Dell's good. Nico Collins is good. But are you really just terrified of them or those players, bro? Like I'm not. I'm not really terrified of them. I'm too. more worried about yeah. the Titans getting their shit together, honestly. Yeah, and that's, that, I'm the same yeah. way every season, man. I worry about us getting our shit together because when we got our shit together. The Colts don't stand a chance against us. The Jags damn sure don't stand a chance against us. And even though we might split with the Texans, I mean, in the great scheme of things, they probably going to fuck around and go 4-12 or 4-13 and 13 or whatever the hell you want to call the record right now. They 4-5 they win team or whatever. I'm not saying that's going to be the case this up-and-coming season, but, you know, literally nothing scares me about the Texans. Besides CJ Straw, I mean, I agree. Yeah. He, he don't even man. scare me because you put a pass for us on him. God dang it, he get the freaking the hell out. <laughs> you start blitzing him. I mean, I, I realize I saw it in the Ravens game. Once yeah. you put that, once you start blitzing him and get him out that pocket, boy, he a different quarterback than what he is inside of that pocket, bro. Yeah, like yeah. he's a lot of like Jared Goff, where if you rush him, he if you don't rush him, he'll pick you apart. But Jared Goff struggles against that blitz. CJ Stroud's gonna be like that. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Against the blitz, so yeah, time to get that pass rush back up. Then should be good. Yeah, uh, yeah, man, most definitely, most definitely. But I just um, thought I was kind of banking yeah. on hopefully Shire coming back because I, I get it. You're right; he is a good run stop guy, and he doesn't pass. But if we run three, four, and we got him back there, then you just pair up another middle linebacker guy with him. That's the pass cover guy. Then when it's like, hey, when we're blitzing, when we're doing this, you're your run stop. You're out here, and you're gonna be your pass coverage. But, uh. It does uh, suck seeing him go, but I, I don't think we would have paid them that either, and definitely not Autry. He wouldn't have performed to that contract here for us or what we needed. That's just too high of a price tag. We got too many holes. We're trying to get young. We're trying to get faster. We're trying to rebuild here, and we can't rebuild by paying 33, 34-year-old $10 million a year when we need to start trying to get younger and better. Right. So let's talk about the corner that we picked up, man. Uh, a guy that's been, you know, talked about – um amongst titans fans uh for a little bit now uh and shoot man i mean shoot, we hell we might be turning into the tennessee Bengals. who knows i mean <laughs> shit. And, and, and as long as it brings up the lombardi i'm cool with it but uh man cheetah bay wooze the titans they agreed to sign them i mean uh we lost sean murphy button which i'm not i'm definitely not tripping about that right now I wouldn't have been mad if we re-signed him, but, you know, it is what it is. He went to the Cardinals. We picked up Cheetah Bay, and I think it's a good, solid signing. Um, I think the Titans aren't done when it comes to cornerback or whatnot because they still need a guy on the outside, and I'm not going to hold y'all. We're not going to sit here and talk about Christian Fulton like that, but I'm kind of I'm kind of concerned. I'm kind of nervous that – they may mess around and re-sign this guy for some freaking reason. I don't know, but, I mean, I I'm getting that vibe, man. Maybe somebody can talk me down about him. But um, Cheetah Bay, I think he's uh, I think he's a solid dude, man. I mean, uh, he's going to come in here and hold it down until, you know, we can draft some, you know, younger, faster guys. You're not going to be able to, you know, completely you know overhaul the uh secondary and one all season but you know you can start getting some pieces in here that can at least hold their own for the time being and uh five stone i'm gonna get your thoughts about cheetah bay uh I, I like the signing but and i'll tell you this too for your for your point this signing lets me know we're not signing fulton because oh, no. that wise, the stat wise, <laughs> this guy and Fulton are damn near the same stat line wise. Now playing on the field, not the fucking same. Not, 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 not the same. I like Christian Fulton go any day of the week. But just to give you perspectives, like uh, 
Awuze was 14 tackles, 14 assists, 56 total, one forced fumble, right? And then you got uh, Christian Fulton was 37 tackles, nine assists, 46 total. So they're only 10 tackles off and one forced fumble. So they're not too much off. But I like the way he plays better. He plays smarter. I, I think this is a really good piece that adds to us. Uh, but I'm with you. We got it. This don't end here. We got to move on and get somebody out there on that outside. I like this. And then Roger McCreary, where we're kind of building off of that. But Christian Fulton is not a part of the plan moving forward. And, and this signing kind of solidified that for me. Go ahead and speak on it, RJ. Oh, you hey, excited? I, I, I said before, you know what I'm saying? I said it on the last podcast on Friday, man, that I really like Cheetah Bay Awuzie, especially when, because, like, man, I, I'll never forget, you know, my boy, he's a Cowboys fan. He used to hype up Cheetah Bay, man. And I was like, man, who's Cheetah Bay Awuzie? Like, why you keep on <laughs> hyping him up? And then I went, you know what I'm saying? I watched the play. I'm like, man, that dude good. He can play a lot of man coverage, you know what I'm saying? This, that, and the other. So we're getting man cut. We're getting a lot. We're getting a man corner. A guy that can actually play in man. And that's what Denard Wilson wants to play. He wants to blitz you and play man. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, he definitely is scheme fit. I think they're probably going to try to find another corner. Maybe a, you know what I'm saying, uh, I don't know where the corners are out there, man, but I'm sure they're probably going to find either corner in the draft or they're going to find a corner in the uh – uh in the in the uh the, another corner in the free agency, but we'll see. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Moore is still out there. Uh, Jordan Jack Cheetah Bay. Ah, that's a good way to break it down. Cheetah Bay. Cheetah Bay. Cheetah Bay. Cheetah Bay. <laughs> that's a good one. All right. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> but Sean, go ahead and speak on it, man. <laughs> yeah, I like the signing. He's a culture player, in my opinion. Uh, the new culture that they want to build here under Callahan, I think that that's a culture player on that secondary. Physical. Uh, one thing with Christian Fulton, uh, I don't know if you all felt this. I feel like he was scared sometimes. Like Christian Fulton was like, scared at times on the field. Uh, yes. Shadobie, whatever, Cheetah, but whatever you say his name, uh, he's not scared. <laughs> Cheetah Bay. Uh, the man coverage, he plays great man coverage. Uh, he... He struggled a little last year, but he is coming off a torn ACL. I think uh, under Denard Wilson, I think that this is a really good signing. Only $12 million a year. Uh, so I really like the signing. A culture player, a guy who's going to come in and be a day one starter. So I think it's a great signing by the Titans. Yeah, because like – like you said, like Fulton played scared or also times it just didn't look confident in what he was doing. And he would talk like he was confident. Pressers, no, I think I did this. And he would talk confident, but then you look, you're playing on the field, bro, and it does not, you don't look confident. You started looking a little more confident towards the end, but that still wasn't enough for me to keep you around. It's time to leave. No, not like, like fully confident. Like, oh, no, no, I'm talking about Rock and Sin. Please don't. Oh, uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> if we do sign Christian Fulton back, man, how, how mad will you be on a scale of one to 10? Bro, I'd be pretty pissed. I, be, I, I, I wouldn't I, say mad. I'd be, I'd be let down like hell. If my on a scale of one to ten, on my level of let down, my shit would be at a twenty-five. I mean, shoot, I'll be out here depressed. So you don't trust, uh, you don't trust Chris and Sloan with better cornerback coaches, man. Like I just feel mm, like, man, you know, I'd rather dude. not. I mean, I'd rather not. Ain't I mean, gonna be playing I'd ten rather, yards off the ball. Man, <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I would, I <laughs> would rather just, you know, I'd rather just, you know, try to find something a little different. And you know, if we can't get anything. We always got Caleb Farley. Here, let me answer that with a question, okay, RJ? Do you believe? With better coaching, Andre Diller could be a better left tackle. Nah, no, <laughs> nah. no, no, no. That's, that's the thing, but there's a difference between them two because Andre Diller been trash since day one. Lee, there have been, there's been so, there's been signs that Christian Fulton could be a good corner. You know what I'm saying? There's been times where he's played good. There, there's been times where he's made plays. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think that this scheme that we were trying to do works for him. He's not his own corner, like. I don't. I don't think he. I think the game's too fast for him. I, that's why I think it is. I think that's why we had to keep him in his zone so much because it, the game is a little too fast for him. But I don't. I. I just don't. I don't think better coaching is going to make him better. I don't see the things of Christian Fulton that made him look good. I didn't see consistency of games put together in a string where it's like okay, he's a sound corner. Like yeah, he can make plays here and there, but that's a depth guy. That's not a guy that deserves a one, two, or three on your slot. That's a guy that comes in when one of your other guy needs a breather. I got you. He's got very you. injury prone as well. He's that's very it. injury prone. So yeah, yeah he, I, he do play hard. Yeah, that's true. I am big no on Christian Fulton. Yeah, yeah, big no, big no. I, man, and that's why I say, man, it's messing with me that, you know, we don't got this 
third round draft pick, man, because that that third round draft pick could have brought us a you know a legitimate corner to put out there. I mean, the fourth round, I mean, yeah, you could get somebody, but you know, your chances are slimmer getting a guy in the fourth round. I mean, the third round, like I said before, it's that sweet spot. And I would have loved to have a third round pick to address corner. And uh man, yeah. uh I'm no, no Christian Fool. No. Right now, I get what you're saying about Rock and Sin, but I rather, I rather not. I wouldn't do, can not do it. I rather have a uh, Roger McQuarrie on the outside than to deal with Rock and Sin and uh, Christian Fool. Well, I'm looking at the free agency right now, the cornerback free agency right now. Right now, they got number four is is Cheetah Bay. You know yep. what I'm saying? They're having number four right now. Uh, I, what about what, what would y'all think about Stefan Gilmore? A little too old for me. I like yeah, Kenny Moore. I like Moore. Kenny Moore. You know? Kenny Moore. Is it, it, do y'all think Kenny Moore is gonna resign? He probably gonna resign. Kenny Moore. Kenny Moore's a slot Thanks. corner. It's a lot like uh he Roger should. McCrary. Yeah, so, yeah they're the same player pretty much. Yeah, he, the same even player. though they could, you know. Play on the outside, you know, on spot duty or whatever. But I wouldn't want to see either of those guys consistently on the outside. No, but I like I would uh, any over Roger Angle. Nah. I like uh, Steven Nelson. He's from uh, Houston. He oh, had yeah. a really good year. He had a really good year last year. Seventy-eight uh, point He's eight. Number eight. Yeah, seventy-eight point eight passer rating when targeted. Had a really good PFF grade. I think if they're going to bring in someone, he is a little older. I think he's like 30, 31. But a one-year deal type guy for him, I think that would be that'd be a good uh, corner two or corner three. So mm -hmm. I yeah. consider that. And they said Kenny Moore already resigned, so there's not that. Oh, oh. I mean, if you can get Tre'Davious White for like a cheap contract, one-year deal, mm -hmm. I'd be willing to try that. But I'm not paying too much for him coming two years off. Uh, uh you know, back-to-back two-year injuries because that's a big concern. But if those injuries don't aren't playing a big factor and you can't come back and play and do a one year, prove it year and just give us a one year transaction tra uh, transition corner for next year's draft, the right price, that would be right. But I mean, it has to be a low ball price for Tredavious white for me. Put a number on it, man, because I ain't gonna lie. Shit. Well, Tredavious white, but it has you to have to take single digit, bro. I'm yeah, sorry, right. man. I right. can't hurt, man. That's I, I always can't hurt, do yeah. that ten million dollars shit with that dude. I mean, oh, shit, it'll have to be, dude, you bro. know, some seven that, million dollar type shit with him. Maybe eight because, man, look, man, I I can't deal with that. I cannot do it. He wasn't what about really, J.C. Jackson. Who? J.C. Jackson. J. Jackson. Nah. Yeah, nah. I mean. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> damn, you see how that just did it real quick, bro? Everybody's like, yeah. Dude, oh, this is bad man. corners, bro. I ain't gonna lie. There ain't too many good corners. I'm looking at man, it. Man, we're gonna have to drive our corner. That's just what it is. And, you know, with everything we got going on, we're not gonna be able to invest what we need to invest in a cornerback. So, I... We're gonna have to mess around and trade back in I the feel, second round, bro. Yeah, wow. I feel com comfortable saying this right now, man. Uh... Cornerback is still going to be a hole going into this season. I mean, hopefully, you know, we hit on left tackle. Hopefully, we hit on receiver to where we can go into 2025 saying that we going to get us a corner in the first round. No, yeah, Would y'all be upset if the Titans went offensive line at number seven and cornerback at 38? Yes. But if they yeah. sign a receiver, then I would consider Depends it. Depends but... on the receiver situation. Yeah. To me, to me, I, 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 I kind of look a little bigger picture right now. Next year's draft is defensive loaded, heavy like a motherfucker. Next year's draft is defense. So this year, go ahead, solidify this offense, solidify us a good wide receiver because next year's draft ain't got really that good of talent at wide receiver. So now's the time for that. Like you said, this is going to be a year where we have a cornerback issue. So get somebody on a one year prove it deal, use them for a transaction uh, transition period real quick, and then next year we go and really load up that defense where we need to, and we'll have a little bit more draft picks to do that as well. But I think this year we got to go – our first and second round picks have to be offensive line and wide receiver, whichever order that goes. But first and second round has to go that way for me. 
Thanks, thanks, thanks. Let's go ahead and change courses a little bit. And before we do, man, we got 391 people in the building, man. I wish we can get them up to 400. Make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, 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 this, at, this, that, and the third. We appreciate y'all very, very much, man. But um, let's talk about receiver, man, because um, the Titans haven't made a move. Uh, on receiver yet, I mean, you haven't seen too many receivers get signed. I mean, the only one that, you know, comes to mind for me right now, and technically too, but mm, he's a damn good, uh, a damn good uh, returner, man. Uh, Duvernay signed with uh, the Jaguars. Jaguars, they also signed Gabe Davis, which I am happy as hell about. That's one less person that I don't want on the Titans that's going to a division rival. I mean, the Jags look like they're jagging up over there. I mean, <laughs> just like Cortland said earlier, the Jags are mid now. I mean, shoot, man, they, they'll they probably, you know, do a little something with Doomer, uh, Doomer uh as far as, you know, returning uh, punts or whatever, but Outside of that, I mean, I'm not worried about, you know, the Jags or whatnot. But um, Calvin Ridley is still available, y'all. Um, Y'all were bringing in Calvin Ridley. I'm going to go ahead and toss that over to Sean. Thanks, Sean froze up up over there. So uh, we're going to uh, toss it off to RJ. RJ, your thoughts? Should Titan go out to Calvin Ridley? I think he's back. Sean, you back? Yeah, I'm back. I just cut out for a little okay. bit. No, you good. Okay, good. Calvin Ridley, yeah. man. Uh, should the Titans go ahead and uh, make a push for Calvin Ridley? No. I I, I don't think it's worth it. I'm hearing $20 million a year uh, for yeah. Calvin Ridley. I would not do that. So, <laughs> I think Calvin Ridley's a bit overrated. I think people are overrating him. I never thought that he'd be – of course, he's not going to be a wide receiver one here, but I'm not trying to pay my wide receiver two twenty million $20 a year. Uh, right now, so I'd much rather go after someone like a uh, Darno Mooney, uh, Curtis Samuel, that type of guy. So I'd pass on Calvin Ridley as well. So yeah, I just would not pay the twenty million price tag. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make too much sense to me. Even though I wouldn't be mad if the Titans end up with Calvin Ridley, but you know, in the great scheme of things, twenty million for you know your wide receiver to or whatnot, or your wide receiver to be whatever you want to call the situation, man. That's, you know, a bit too steep, man. I'd rather go out and get a guy like um, Darnell Mooney, which, you know, uh, I'm warming up to the idea of Darnell Mooney, man. I got to watch a little bit of Darnell Mooney's tape, man. Uh, oh, like man. RJ said, man, he, he, he a legit guy, man. I mean, he uh he done had a thousand yard season a couple years back, man. So I mean, he's uh definitely you know productive. I mean, I can't knock him for the situation that that was going on up over there in Chicago. I mean, Drew, they was dealing with you know coaching issues and you know quarterback issues or whatnot. But um, uh, Darnell Mooney, Curtis Samuel, um. Who else is out there wide receiver that I wouldn't be mad? Who? Tyler Boyd. Uh, Ty, no, 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 no. No? Stay away from Tyler I don't think Boyd. he's going to be too expensive. I, I, he's too old, man. I'm sorry. No, Ty, he's he's old, stay old, away uh, from Tyler Boyd, bro. 29. Right now, man, right now, I don't think we need to touch any of the receivers. You know what I'm saying? Keep them on speed dial. Keep them, keep, keep some text messages on. You know what I'm saying? Definitely don't touch Tyler Boyd Brown. Yeah, don't touch any of your receivers, man. These receivers just coming out this draft, dog. I'm telling y'all, man, they they go they they just as good as the receivers that's that's on the free agency right now. You don't need to pay all this money to unless you your your receiver your receiver draft didn't go the way that you wanted to go. Then you go after these guys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right now, you need to see what you're gonna get in the draft, and then after the draft's over, then you go after these guys. You know what I'm saying? Like these these are none of these wide receivers that's on here are game changers. I know people gonna yell yeah. Calvin Ridley. Like Calvin Ridley's a good player, but he's not no he's not no <laughs> game changer, bro. Like he don't he don't move the needle for the Tennessee Titans at all in the division if we get Calvin Ridley. Like he does but, he's not moving the needle. But I think the bigger picture here to understand too, like, yeah, we do need a game changer too, but we need depth at wide receiver. Traylon Burke's still a question mark. 
D hop's gone next year. So if we just draft a wide receiver in the draft, D hop leaves next year, Traylon turns out to be a bust. We're just going to have a rookie wide receiver in the room. So we got to get some depth here. So I get it. Not all these guys are game changers, but we still need depth here. So I, I, I'm i with you. Some older, but Tyler Boyd's only 29. That's not too old. I would go Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel's the biggest yeah. name. On the list. Yeah, I like like Curtis Samuel. He has I the like best catch ratio out of everybody out of here or, you know, completion. He Everybody else is sticking around the 50%. If you throw it to him, you got you, you know, you got 50-50 chance they're going to catch it. He's sitting here around like 60, 64, 65% catch ratio. Uh, ratio. So – He's one of those guys that makes contested catches. And you said, Morocco, you don't blame him for the situation he had in, in, in Bears or Mooney, but that was Justin Fields out there. Who the hell is the damn QB for the Washington Commanders, bro? And that's this dude dope. is still been out there putting on a show and catching everything, you know, catching majority of the stuff that's thrown his way. So that shows to me that that's a hardworking, damn good wide receiver that I want on our team that we need to get wide receivers that don't drop the ball because that's been a huge issue for us in the, in the past. He's not going to cost too much either. No, he's not. He'll be, yeah. Six to nine million a year. I mean, and the bad quarterback play, it's just like he's played with Sam Howell, Carson Wentz, yeah. um, Taylor Heineke. Like, I don't think he's had a single quarterback who I would even say is league average. And he's yeah. still putting up numbers. He had two drops last year. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, Curtis Samuel. We could unlock his ability. He's a deep threat. Like, he can yeah. go down and make plays. He just hasn't had the quarterback play to do so with Will Levis. That could be a yeah, loss. So, yeah, I really, I really like Curtis Samuel. I think he's a much better option than Calvin Ridley. Yeah, and Curtis Samuel and Tyre Boyd also has the two biggest yaks uh, averages on this on this list too. So, like, they they might be a little old, but they're also the guys that's making plays, and they're also the guys that's holding on to the ball majority of not of the times than these other guys on the list. Yeah, man. Uh... Right, we can't rush. I agree with you completely. It's, we got to. I already said this new bill is going to take two years. It's going to take two years right. to fix up these problems. Yeah, yeah. I, I said minimum two years, and you know what I'm saying. So I, I just think that even if we don't get all the receivers that we want next year, there, there's going to be another load of receivers to come out the draft. I mean, it, the way yeah. college football is being played now, everybody's playing receiver, everybody playing DB, and everybody playing quarterback. <laughs> you feel me? Like, it, there's always going to be a lot of those three positions until the game changes again. So, I, that's just where I feel with, feel about it, you know what I'm saying, moving forward. I'm not going to lie. I would be one happy camper if we end up with Xavier Leggett. Because <laughs> good God alive. He be you, fast and, man, look. Y'all know how I feel about Joe Alt, man. Uh, it gives me butterflies every time I watch his film. Same thing with Leggett. I mean, God dang. I mean, I just get butterflies like a motherfucker, man, watching this dude make plays, man. And uh, somebody uh, somebody compared him to um, – AJ Brown. Off of, well, yeah, he's getting that comparison as well. Yeah, I AJ see Brown, DK, yeah. man, caffeine him too. Yeah. But they were saying that uh, Xavier Leggett is better than one of the other wide receivers uh, in the draft. Oh, yeah, um, Ron Meduse, in which, you know, I, I'm out on Ron Meduse. I mean, that dude right there just doesn't excite me. I mean, I could only see him, yeah. I mean, I see the route running or whatnot. I mean, I see, you know, him catching the ball, making some good catches or whatever, but – for the seventh overall pick, man, um, man, I need some explosives from this, man. I mean, I need some yak. I mean, at that seventh spot, you know, uh, Malik Neighbors, if he's there, you know, and all is off the board, I mean, that's my guy. I'm a happy camper with uh, Malik Neighbors. But, boy, the Titans get the get, boy, man, listen, man. Bruh, I, I, do I might shed a tear. <laughs> 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 I, I'm, I'm gonna disagree with you on that, uh, Morocco man. I do like Roma Doozy, man. I do think he is the second best dry, uh, wide receiver in his class, and I, I know I like him more than uh, I like him more than I like Malik Neighbors. I'm gonna be real, like I love Malik Neighbors' tape. He fast, he explosive, but 
He just hit when it comes to taking the take me, you know what I'm saying? That man Roma doozy, man. He get money, you know what I'm saying? That's why that's why I like him. But also, like, I do like Xavier Leggett as well. Xavier Leggett has elite speed. It would go along with his big frame, you know what I'm saying? And he got a big catch catch radius, you know, as well. You know what I'm saying? So bro, Rome Roma Duze is 6'3, 212, and runs a 445, bruh. I, that's a lot, bro. And and his oh, tape like good too. He that's a big dude that we need that actually got some speed on him too. How many how many six three dudes is running four fours? You know, so I, I like him too. I I take him like I said. I take him over neighbors and Leggett. Like I think neighbors is that little shifty guy that can make plays and 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 really go out there and be explosive. But they, we've shown at times, and we are showing that we're still rebuilding a line. We got a rookie young QB to still learn things. It seems like contested catches is going to be a thing that we're going to have to face moving forward. So we're going to not only need guys to get explosive, but we're going to need big bodies that can get open and catch the ball and hold on to the ball in tough situations. Cause it feels like we're going to be in a lot of tough situations more than we are going to be in take the top off of team situations. I do I, somebody I, put up about Keon Coleman. I do like Keon Coleman as well, man. I'm not mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna get letting no 40 time make me stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, bro. You go watch his tape, bro. He big, physical, you know what I'm saying? Tall got hops, man. You know what I'm saying? And you watch him run that uh that one little a gauntlet drill, man. I mean, he ran that perfectly. Oh Lord, here come Trey with his trailing birds, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, 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 that was, that's a that's a big body. And even though, even though Keenan rode like a four six uh forty, bro, he, in his ten yard split, he was one five four, which is average with everybody else that was running. So yeah, he might not have speed that lasts and break away from you, but getting off in that first ten yards, he's about average with everybody else's speed anyway. So. That's that you know, this is football. Nobody's ever running completely in a straight line for 40 yards. Yeah. You know, you're running, juking all this stuff. So his his angles, his move, and, and his transition and stuff, I'm fine with. I don't care about that four six forty. It, it, it's not a big deal to me either. Yeah, man. I, I watched uh Keon Coleman tape and I actually um saw Ke- Keon Coleman's first game of um uh, last year, man. And I looked at that dude and I said, Man, it that dude right there, he, he just made freaking plays. I mean, <laughs> shit, man. I mean, just big body dude going to moss the hell up out of you. And uh, I'm not worried about a 40 time with him. I mean, he's not projected to go in the top 10. Uh, and back to uh, Ron Meduse, man. I mean, y'all, and I've, get, I've given him multiple looks. I'm talking about, you know, I done went back four or five times just, you know, looking at you know he he just doesn't do it for me man i mean it's just one of them situations to where you know um you cut on the tape and you know you just don't get excited about him man i mean i get more excited than y'all not gonna believe this did did, did you talk about roma doozy huh yeah yeah, I'm talking about Roma Yeah, I can see I can see where you get that from. You yeah, know, so yeah, yeah I'm not gonna lie. Look, look. I get more excited watching Brock Bowers tape than yeah. Roma does it, man. I mean, yeah. true, Brock Bowers, and y'all know I do not want a damn tight end in number seven. But I'm not gonna sit up here and dis- discredit Brock Bowers. That motherfucker is bad ass. <laughs> now you going to make see what I was saying. I've like, been seeing it the whole time. But we don't need them. At, at number seven, I will not draft a tight end. Just can I get you? Do we it. don't need him. Yeah. I just saying we don't he, need He's him. gonna make plays, bro. If he if we come to the tight bro, y'all gonna love that boy. <laughs> he is the truth. Like, it, it, if we didn't have as many holes and we were more <laughs> man, I'm so as hell. I wish I could drink right now, but man. shoot, man, I got a job to do. <laughs> If it was more put together and we didn't have as many teams, then Brock Bowers would be a great pick here. But yeah. we have too many holes and too many issues at more important positions and tied in to have to go get this guy. It would be great, but it we're just we're not looking for that right now. We're not. So, timing fucking sucks. Oh man, somebody brought up Xavier Worthy. Man, I'm not gonna let that 40 time. Like I said, I'm not gonna let a 40 time make me stupid. That dude is way too small to be in the league, bro. 165. Small, bro. He is going to get hurt. He's going, he's not, bro. He's gonna get clocked, bro. I'm telling you, bro. He is too small. Like, bro, he's I like Eddie Mitchell better. I like the <laughs> other text receiver, AD Mitchell. I like him way better. Yeah, than yeah. AD Mitchell's a way I better. I would much rather have AD Mitchell, oh, but yeah. at the same time, man, um, 
look, look at Smitty over there uh, in Philadelphia, man. I mean, shoot, they said the same thing about him. Hell, we he didn't he go in the top ten as well, or you know, around the top ten. I mean, yeah. shoot, he he doing just fine in the NFL. I mean, shoot, maybe you can put put some muscle on him or whatever, but that motherfucker can make plays. God dang it, he can. Let though. him I'm make let him make his plays, dude. And I wouldn't be mad at Xavier Worthy, man, if you know they look at him and say, you know, we need to bring this guy in. Bruh, man, at 160, though, bro, that is small. He's 5'11", 160 at that. This ain't a 5'9", 160. Oh, no, 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 no. 165. Like, we saw, okay, fast time's cool, but we saw this with John Ross. John Ross had a fast time, and John Ross was small. John Ross wasn't even this small, and this dude is this tiny. Like, you could put on weight. Hey. Who is also at it? Nice man, that he don't have the talent to play in the league. I'm saying he gonna get hurt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what I'm saying, yeah, it's nobody he clocking him, bro. Like, he yeah. was already at a collegiate level that would have bulked him up. This ain't like he was at some mid school. He was out there at Texas that has a program that can build people up, cornbread fed type. You know, get them big. So it's not like well, the NFL changes. He wasn't at like some smaller school doing the best he can. He was at Texas, so that's a big question mark and a big concern for me. What, bro? I'm five ten and I'm not one sixty. I know my ass will go out there and probably get hurt. No, tell him what his little ass would do. Yeah, man. I like I said, man. I. Uh... I ain't got, you know, those same concerns about Worthy. I mean, shoot, he, if he can go out there and make plays, man, you let him go make plays. You put him on a, you know, a good eating program, send his ass to Wendy's and McDonald's <laughs> on the regular, put him in <laughs> that <laughs> weight room. Gotta gain some weight. I if mean, he'll, he'll, he'll be cool. Hey, I, will, I will say yeah, this let though. him hang around Traylon Burks, man. Let him get right. <laughs> I, I will say this though, uh, that dude from Florida State, uh, Johnny Wilson, bro, he's 6'6, 230, runs a 4'5. That shit's unreal. So, no, nah, yeah, he they talking about that dude may play tight end in the league, bro. Whew, something, hey, but hey, transition player, I don't care, bro. 6'6 at, at, at that speed at a 4'5, that's that's unreal, man. Yeah, I'm with Corlin on that, man. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, man, 5'10", 175, 180, man, and stayed in the league forever. I mean, shit, yeah. this motherfucker just retired, bro. He came, he came right. in at the same time as CJ, 2K, so, man. Okay. But when we're talking statistics, right, Deshaun Watson is a minority in that situation where majority of the people that come in in small get hurt, hurt. Like 80% of the guys that come in in that size come in hurt. So, yes, is there a probable chance that he can? Absolutely. But we're not in a position to take that risk with a guy to see if you can bulk up, if you can stay healthy. We can't get Traylon Burks to stay healthy. We don't need to have another question mark of a guy as if he's too small to get healthy. Kyle Phillips is already too small to get healthy. We we can't keep adding these same things. It's cool. There's some things that's glitz and glimmers about these guys that make them look nice. But at the end of the day, we still got to be home and realize that we can't keep repeating the same cycle and, and getting guys with these question marks on injuries. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel you. Um, anything else y'all want to cover tonight? Uh, I think that was everything. I want to go uh, through our mission. We got through all the free agency. So, I, I, nah, I, I, yeah, man, we uh we didn't tackle uh, pretty much everything. I mean, Devontae Smith, small look, man. Devontae Smith, man, that boy played in the SEC. You know what I'm saying? Like he was getting popped, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I seen. I don't. I just don't think the man, he the was big, way big more offense, nah, no fit firestone. I ain't coming for your team, bro. But the big <laughs> 12, bro, they not hidden like the SEC, bro. They uh, not the big 12, don't worry. <laughs> no, nah, man. But y'all used to play in that little ass conference, bro. <laughs> Xavier Worthy is not close to as technically sound as Devontae Smith was coming out of Alabama. So you also have to keep that in mind. Where De- Xavier Worthy, he has the high end speed, yes, but <laughs> hands route running he's nowhere near Devonte smith was and he's smaller than Devonte smith so i agree with rj on this he's gonna be very injury prone and like john ross he's a very one-dimensional player yeah yeah and Devonte smith is also playing in a system that's wide receiver by committee you how many other dudes is above him that don't he don't have to worry about taking the bigger hits because they have eyes on him worthy would come here and be one of the guys with eyes on that is going to be starting and playing being a one or being two next to d hop so it's, it's worthy nowhere near the receiver that Devonte Smith is, bro. I'm yeah. sorry, bro. It's not, it's not even a question. Sorry, bro. I, 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 I ain't gonna say all that, but let me ask y'all this, and then, uh, 
Now we'll talk about something else real quick before we get up out of here, man, because I ain't going to lie. I, I love chopping it up with y'all, man. We got 384 in the building tonight, man. Y'all make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. But, um, man, do y'all see uh, Xavier Worthy dropping out of the second round? I think I don't think he makes it past the Chiefs at 32. I was about to say the same yeah, thing. I, I don't think he makes it past the Chiefs. Mahomes won't him, bro. Yeah. Mahomes, Mahomes go, now, if he go to the Chiefs, I, I, I can see that shit working. Because Mahomes, all he got he got the arm to throw that motherfucker the whole goddamn field. So, it's yeah. like he can – that's it to work with him. He he got to go to the right team. He got to yeah. go to the right team. If you don't go – if you go to teams like us, we ain't going to know how to use them like, we, like they do. And Mahomes is, has a unique skill, too, that a lot of other QBs don't have either, is he doesn't really throw his wide receivers into taking big-ass hits neither. Yeah. So he he kind of knows how to protect his, his wide receivers, and a lot of QBs don't know how to do that in the league, and that's another special talent Patrick Mahomes has as well. Facts, facts, facts. Um, We're going to go ahead and change courses a little bit, man. Um, Russell Wilson to the Steelers, man. Um, I saw that right there, and – um. You know, it didn't shock me because uh, Friday, uh, Friday, you know, Friday afternoon, he came out. You know, he was taking a flight to Pittsburgh or whatever. And I said then that he probably going to end up signing because the Steelers, they most definitely need a quarterback. That shit with Kenny Pickett is not working for them. And it damn sure wasn't working with Mr. Trubisky. But uh, bringing in Russell Wilson, uh, I think it's a good move for the Steelers because uh, just like Atlanta, you know, they needed a competent quarterback. And although, you know, Russ damn sure didn't play up to that contract that he got from the Broncos and, you know, the Broncos, good God alive. They're a mess. <laughs> yeah, man. They just, they they just keep on going down the gutter, man. They won a Super Bowl and ain't shook back ever since. But, uh, <laughs> man, uh, Russell Wilson, I think it's a good pickup for the state of step of fact that they needed a company quarterback. You know, they got they got some guys up over there at wide receiver. Uh, there might be some trade talk going on for one of those wide receivers or whatnot because – you know, those guys don't seem too happy for whatever reason. Maybe it's because they didn't have a legitimate quarterback. That a change with Russ, man. And Russ, he'll be linking up with uh, former Falcons head coach, former Titans OC, you know, one of the best OCs that we've had that blessed us, uh, Arthur, Arthur Smith. Um, I think it'll be good for him, man. My man Arthur, you know, he's got a track record of, you know, um, rejuvenating these uh, quarterbacks. You know, Ryan Tannehill, you know, he came to Tennessee. He got Ryan Tannehill together, helped him get paid. And, you know, that right there led to him getting a job in Atlanta. And even though it didn't go uh, as planned in Atlanta, you know, that still doesn't take away from, you know, the fact that, Arthur Smith is a legitimate offensive coordinator. So I think that and if the Steelers can, you know, retain their weapons, the guys they got at wide receiver, I think that right there is going to open up their run game because, you know, the run, it was so bad with the Steelers. Shoot, they couldn't even get a run game going unless they were playing against the Titans and good God alive. They just, ugh. The oh, Titans God. just let anybody have a day against them. But that's another discussion. We talking about Russell Wilson with the Steelers right now. I'm going to uh, pass it over to Sean and get your thoughts on Russell Wilson. I think it's a good bridge quarterback for them. It's obviously not their long-term franchise quarterback, but I think he's a good bridge. Uh, it was a one-year deal, so if he plays well, they can bring him back for another a year or two. But I think they go quarterback in next year's draft. I think this is just a placeholder for – the eventual franchise quarterback that they can get in 2025 or 2026. So he only signed for like a million dollars because he's getting so much money from the Broncos. But I like this move to the Steelers. Uh, good bridge quarterback uh, for them to eventually find their franchise quarterback. Mm-hmm. RJ, talk to him. Uh, I've been roasting my dad all, all day today, man. He <laughs> Russell Wilson. 
I say this, man. The Steelers just bought an 07 Range Rover with 180k miles on it. <laughs> you, know <what> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been ro- I've been roasting dead about it all day, man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we've been we've been jawing back and forth, man, about free agency, man. It's been it's been a good day, man. You know. But yeah, Russell Wilson, man, I think he'll be a good pickup for them, man. Uh, I think he, I think he's better than Kenny Pickett. Uh, I'll say that he gives them what Kenny Pickett is not getting, and that's a a, a deep a deep ball because <laughs> Kenny Pickett noodle arm. He's not, he, he's just not it, man. They finna let him go. Uh, Russell Wilson probably just a little short term deal until they get them another quarterback, man. You know the Steelers, they don't like to suck, so it's like they can't suck to 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 get the quarterback they want, man. So uh, you know we'll see. But I I I. I don't see why they. I, I guess I do see why because it's bare minimum league average. You get one, you, you, you know, bare. It's the league bare minimum that they're paying them. It's a one year prove it while we stepping stones get. It. So I get it from that point, but I don't see how Russell's going to survive and do well in Pittsburgh. I am a huge believer that that AFC North QBs have to be strong arm QBs. You're up there in the North where winds is 30, 40 miles per hour sometimes, and y'all don't play in domes. So you got to learn how to throw against cross winds and stadiums outside all the time. And Russell don't have that type of arm. Let's be honest. Russell couldn't fit a fucking bullet into a slant route on a goal line to win a Super Bowl. How the hell is he going to throw into Pittsburgh? <laughs> <still away? laughs> <laughs> so I just don't see this being good. I think that, like what Sean's kind of saying here, I think that they better that I can pay a guy low. They expect us to be trying. We are going to try, but this is also a guy that we can bring in that the fans won't feel like we're quitting, but also could put us in a position next year to be in a very good position to draft the QB that we want in a higher draft class. Man, I'll say this. I think they're going to be running the ball uh, more with Arthur Smith, and they, they probably going – Run the ball more efficiently because that shit they had going on with Canada. I don't know what the hell they, I don't know what the hell kind of run game they had going. I mean, some way, somehow, I mean, that run game came alive against the Titans, but I mean, <laughs> I think it would be more consistent under Arthur Smith because, you know, he does understand how to you know, um, develop a good run game. But uh, we ain't going to hold y'all talking about the Steelers, man, because this ain't the Steelers Coliseum podcast. This is the Titans Coliseum podcast, man. And we had damn near 400 people in the building tonight, y'all, man. Shout out to y'all, man, for turning us up. Man, y'all been, you know, rocking and rolling in them comments, man. Y'all been <laughs> cracking us up, man. We appreciate y'all very much. Y'all make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. Sean, appreciate you coming through, bro, man. Tell sure. tell the people where they can find you at. Uh, on X or Twitter, if you call it, uh, just Charm Sports, and then uh, my website, charmsports.com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all make sure y'all go over to SeanSports.com, man. I mean, very informative informative articles, man. Straight to the point, man. He ain't going to hold you there all day. My main shoot, man. Young dude up and coming, man. He going to give you some damn good information, man. And he's also, too, going to be helping us out, man, uh, with some articles and stuff, man. And we appreciate you coming on board, man. We look forward to working with you. And, uh, man, I know the people going to enjoy what you uh, got in store for them, man. Ooh, paper find Toby Bursett. Mm, he, going back, he going back to New England. That's what's up, man. Shout out back, to him. That yeah. man just hanging around, back, man. Backup quarterback uh, option. I'll, yeah, I'll man. Get yeah, off, man. Name, name, name the player that you guys want. After you know, say after I said we got all these uh, people that we got now, but name the person that you want that's available right now. Yeah, that's how, bro. You took that right off my mind. I was just about <laughs> to say, next guy that y'all want the Texans to go get now. So who who? I, well, I know who most of y'all y'all want. Reader, that's that's what most of y'all on here want, right? Yeah. Podcast, reader, I, I'm gonna go. Who's I'm gonna go. Let's, 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 let's silence that shit. Go wide receiver. Go get Curtis Samuel. Let's, I let's, agree. Let's just get that. I, I say, say, I say, no. If if y'all gonna say nobody but reader, but let me get, let me get Darnell Moody. I want, I want Curtis Samuel. You gotta get that slot receiver position. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah man, I have to agree, man. As bad as I want DJ Reed, and I already said, man, if we get DJ Reed, I'm going to be walking around here with a black and orange Titan jersey on, man, <laughs> with tiger stripes down that mug or whatever. But, uh, hey, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on. R- RJ, ahead. and Darnell Mooney had 61 targets, where Curtis Samuel had 62 receptions. Mm. This man had more receptions than Mooney even had targets. I won't be mad with neither, uh, man. I can, I just just go get a receiver. I like Darnell Mooney. I'm cool with either one of them. I'm cool with either Speaking one of Speaking of Darnell Mooney, Chiefs are interested in Darnell Mooney per ESPN. Oh, oh. Yeah, Red, go. Red, get, Red, get back in the kitchen, man. You bullshit. You ain't got no time to be watching TV, man. We well, need your ass in that kitchen, man. Go go ahead and whip us up some, man. We hungry around here. We need you, man. Yeah. And while we speaking about Red cooking, just like Corey said, man, y'all go get that merch, man. We got them Let's Red Cook shirts on deck, man, and we want to hear all your foolish just about, man, why are we coming out with this slogan? Man, look, man, let us just promote our shit, man, and let Red and cook. cook. We're not asking you to trust him. We just simply telling you to let Red cook. Let him do his job. Five song. Talk to him. Yeah, so I, yeah, no, I, I, Darnell Mooney for that, for, for, or not Darnell Mooney. See now, RJ, you don't got it. <laughs> Curtis. <Anderson. laughs> but uh, th- this episode has been brought to you by lionsdenbeardcollection.com. If you're trying to get all the, the, keep your beard in a tip top shape, go to lionsdenbeardcollection.com, get the luxurious products that they have there. Use promo code Coliseum, get 25% off your order. As well, they do have the Lioness collection, so they got lip gloss and other products for females as well. So have your uh, girlfriends and moms, all that as well well check them out uh this episode is also brought to you by sunnysmilescoffee.com premium freshly roasted coffee they have a bunch of origins a bunch of sample size packs that you can go get some great tasting coffee it's guaranteed fresh so go to sunnysmilescoffee.com and get free shipping on all your u.s orders as well as go to facebook and join the titans army community none of that foolishness you're gonna be around fans that love two-tone blue business just like you do and just have some fun sports talk interaction so join the titans army community on facebook and we said this already a bunch of times but go to the titans coliseum website sign up for our articles blogs are going to be posted especially from here from charm sports now you can also go there watch the broadcast watch the episodes and you can go grab merch like this shit right here. You can go get the let rain cook merch out there. You can go get the merch like me and Rocco have on here with the Titans Coliseum versus everybody or the hoodie like RJ has right there with just a logo on it. We have plenty of merch out there. It supports us. It helps the, the funds all go into the podcast, help us continue to put a production together, keep on growing and keep putting on a better show for y'all. So we truly appreciate y'all support in that as well. So thank y'all for all the support and go grab some of the new merch. Let rain cook. Yeah, man. Let rain cook. And y'all tighten the fuck up. Let's go.